Some of us are born with a particular set of skills. Bottom the yokai coming closer and closer as the Jaws music amplifies. But now in the hallway, that's four for Bolo. Will he get the ace turn in the corner? Give it to it's him! Bolo! Let's go! Give him the ace, put it in the montage, TSM of 2-0! There is an innate talent that manifests itself at a young age, a god-given mastery of a game that can carry you through even the craziest situations. Grenade, but Alem's able to survive as uh, P4 will go down. Shaiko able to pick up a double kill there. He's not gonna be able to land the third one. Yes, he does. Shaiko with a quad. But for most of us, the grind is what gets us to where we want to be. And the earlier we start, the higher our chances are to, well, get good. If I get stuck, dude, I will cry. And for those of us fighting to survive in games where we lack natural ability and experience, the intuition is to seek guidance from others who can save us from ourselves. But what if I told you that in the Rainbow Six Siege community, players weren't only lining up for advice dished out by prodigious Zoomers. That instead, they were most likely learning to play the game from a filthy casual turned hardcore content creator by the name of Dylan Get Flanked Clark. An ambitious old fella who saw the seemingly insurmountable learning curve of Rainbow Six Siege as just another barrier that was meant to be broken. Tell me if this looks... So this is how we're gonna play today, Siege? Is this the game we're playing today? And amazingly, not only has he managed to overcome all of the challenges presented to him in one of esports' most unforgiving games, he's turned it into something life-changing. Imagine, you know, you're in your 30s, you have two kids, you have a mortgage and everything, and going to your partner and being like, hey, I'm gonna give up this very secure, very stable job, and I'm gonna go after my dream, which is content creation. So what exactly drove a family man to abandon a steady career in favor of saving matchmaking mouth breathers? And how did this certifiable boomer become one of the most recognizable and influential figures in Rainbow Six Siege? Okay, so if you are unacquainted with my boy Flanked, you should know that he is a man of many talents. He's a trained military aircraft mechanic, a one-man band, Stop to pretend. Stop pretending. and he absolutely loves playing against cheaters. Hey, he's dead. Oh my god. What? You don't see that? All joking aside, over the last few years, Flanked has essentially cemented himself as the unofficial Sherpa of the Siege community a trusted voice of reason for noobs everywhere who are just trying to navigate the perils of a brutally unforgiving game. What am I dying from? I got electrocuted or something? But before he had more than half a million dedicated disciples on YouTube, Flanked was just a regular family man who casually gamed on console when he wasn't serving in the Army National Guard. You know, I've been playing video games my whole life, but, um... Worked on content creation while doing that. There was a, a pretty, about a two year overlap there where I was creating content and doing ARMY. Initially, Flanked began dabbling with content creation back in 2015, primarily posting Call of Duty tips and tricks videos. But towards the beginning of 2017, he began investing more of his time into a game that he dabbled with in beta a couple of years prior. One that would end up changing his life forever. What is up guys, I am Get Flanked, and today we're gonna talk about some Rainbow Six Siege. I'm gonna tell you guys why you should be playing this game and what you're missing if you're not. For Flanked, Siege was an exciting prospect in that it combined the frenetic pace of Call of Duty with the depth of a MOBA, all the while encouraging player creativity through its unique take on map destruction. Siege was calculated chaos, with a devilish helping of cheese that made it every bit as frustrating as it was glorious. Okay, I, I see him. No f***ing way! Oh. I've been hit as well, man. Why? As dramatic as this sounds, I think there is some truth to it. I mean, when you go through the army, you take some punishment and, you know, you stick with it and you don't quit and you keep 
trying to, 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 to persevere. And when you first start Rainbow Six Siege, you take some punishment. It's been called the Dark Souls of FPSs for a reason. I mean, it's a very punishing game with a very steep learning curve. And if you're somebody who gives up easily, you probably will go and never play it again after you die to a, you know, a bullet hole uh, one time. Over the course of the next year, more and more noobs began flocking to Flank's channel for guidance. And before long, he'd amassed a sizable enough following to consider content creation as more than just a hobby. But for somebody who was already considered to be past it by video game standards and had a house and a family to take care of, the decision to become a full-time content creator was a bit of a gamble. My wife is a saint. Imagine you're in your 30s, you have two kids, you have a mortgage and everything, and going to your, your partner and being like, hey, I'm gonna give up this very secure, very stable job, and I'm gonna go after my dream, which is content creation. Having somebody who believes in you enough to actually say yes to that is uh, really special and something that I will uh, thank her for and, and forever be in her debt for. You know, there were definitely a lot of uh, raised eyebrows whenever I said, hey, I'm not gonna be an aircraft mechanic anymore. I'm gonna do YouTube full time. But you know, I've been doing it full time for almost three years now. And I think that the longer it goes on, the more they realize, okay, this isn't just some type of crazy thing. This is something that he's actually good at. But a career change was only one of the challenges that Flanked would have to overcome. You see, after playing games on console for longer than a lot of his viewers had been alive, he opted to make the move to PC to hang out with the big fish and really up his game. You know, learning the keyboard after spending my whole life on console, uh, I never played any PC games uh, really, I mean, no, no first person shooters on, on PC at all. Learning the keyboard was tough and, you know, there's a whole different speed to the game on PC compared to console. So that adjustment was challenging as well. Eventually, after hours and hours of honing his mouse and keyboard skills, his efforts began to pay off. He managed to pull himself up through the ranks into plat, and all the while he documented his discoveries to help others follow in his footsteps. From the beginning of making videos to now, that's always been what it is. You know, what what am I going through as a player? What am I learning? What lessons am I learning? And how can I pass those along to the audience so that maybe that their learning curve is a little shorter than mine and they don't have to go through the same painful lessons that I did. What was Yo, that? Unreal! No! No! Oh my god! Now, Flanked will be the first to tell you that he isn't some bolo flicking, ground knifing, Reddit worshipped aim god, but that doesn't mean that his contributions to the community have gone unnoticed by his peers. Yeah, Flank's really important to the community because he covers every single type of gamer that plays Siege. He's extremely knowledgeable and he explains things extremely clearly, which sometimes I have a hard time doing. So I think that he's definitely like an amazing go-to person for anybody, no matter what type of player you are. I think one of the, the biggest things that he does, he takes concepts and, and things in the game that are kind of, I guess, more complex for people and breaks them down for like the, the average player in Siege. I, I guess it's really easy to have the knowledge for stuff if you just play a lot or you play at a high level and stuff like that, but it's a lot harder to teach people, I guess, right? It's like why teachers are so important. A lot of people might have the knowledge for something, but it's a whole other thing to actually teach someone how to do it. But as the old saying goes, no good deed goes unpunished. And in a world where seemingly everyone on Reddit is some champion ranked aim god with an unquestionably large e -peen, Flanked has gotten a lot of shit from people for not being something that he never claimed to be. I don't feel like I'm very good at the game. I think Flanked is probably better than me, so I don't know. But at the same time, Flanked also doesn't claim to be Bolo. He doesn't claim to be godly. He's not He's not false advertising himself. Like, his videos aren't titled, like, I'm the best Siege champion on the planet. Like... He's very upfront with everybody about how he is, how he plays, his mindset. In fact, Flank's reputation as this thoughtful, patient player who personally experienced all the challenges of ranking up has made him the perfect go-between for the casual player, the competitive player, 
and Ubisoft. I think that, that perspective that I have when speaking for the casual community is grounded in realism that you need the casual community in order for this game to survive. And uh, the fact of the matter is, if you don't have a casual community, the pros that might criticize that casual community perspective are unemployed within a year or so. But even if you don't agree with every spicy take that flanked fires off into the salty ether of Siege, it's hard to dispute that he has the game's best interest at heart. Not only has he offered constructive suggestions to make the game a better overall experience for players of all ranks, he's been able to directly draw Ubisoft's attention to issues, like the annoying epidemic of mouse and keyboard players on console, and even completely overlooked game-breaking bugs. The Cavera, that felt very nerve-wracking because I found it and then I uploaded it and then I saw the reaction to it and I didn't really realize how big of a deal it was until I started seeing the reaction. There was definitely a, a moment of kind of, oh my goodness, what have I done? That didn't feel great necessarily, but the fact that in the long term it got fixed because of it and the fact that I found something that was in the game that so many millions of people have been playing in the, in the time span that that's been out and never noticed, it's kind of a cool feeling, no doubt about it. But maybe the most refreshing thing about Flank is the fact that he's able to criticize Siege, which does have its fair share of problems, all while being respectful and level-headed about it. And that's definitely something that the Siege community at large could learn from. I think he's a lot better than an average player. He's just like a regular Siege player. He, he enjoys the game, he likes it for what it is, and he wants it to be better, like all of us do. Um, he's probably a little bit nicer about those things the way he says them than I do, than I do but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we all want the same thing, right? We all want the, the game to be better in the long term. Um, we all go about that in our, like our, our, I guess, our own ways. And uh, yeah, I think he does a, a pretty good job of it overall. And it's, it's nice that he has like the devs on, especially too. Like that's a, a huge thing to be able to like hear their perspectives. And honestly, that is the beauty of a guy like Flanked. Despite the growth of his channel, the improvement of his rank, and taking up social media responsibilities for Dark Zero Esports, he's never forgotten where he came from. And that maturity is something that's only earned him affection from his fans. Two different people make personalized pins for me. Pins. That's, that's a pretty touching experience. I've had people, you know, send me emails saying that I've got them out of a dark place, that I've helped them, you know, cope with their anxiety or, you know, a rough point in their life. People talked about how, you know, they've related with me because I'm, you know, a little bit older and it's helped them bond with, you know, their son or their daughter and, and, and get into the, you know, the same things that, that they have, they've been interested in. Um, you know, that stuff has been very touching. And thanks to his positive attitude and dedication to making the Siege community better, a world of incredible opportunities have presented themselves to him that might not have had he not dared to dream. Oh, flanked with the move. Double kill for him on the round. He's warming up. At the end of the day, a lot can be learned from Get Flanked's crazy journey into the world of content creation. His story is a testament to the idea that it's never too late to pursue your passions in life and maybe, just maybe, turn them into something more. And through his continued dedication to Siege and his role as a humble ambassador for its casual player base, he keeps the game he loves alive and well for the rest of us. I guess at the, at the end of the day, if there's one thing that I want people to get from me, I just hope that I, hope that I enhance their enjoyment in the game and that uh, by watching my content, it, it draws a deeper connection with them and something that uh, makes them passionate about what I am as well. <laughs> in other words, people criticize Flanked for not being the very thing that he never claimed to be. They're like, oh, you're not as good as Bolo. And he's like, I, like, <laughs> like, like crushed it, lad. That's it. That's it. Not bad at all. <laughs> 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 <laughs>